with most people, they think that it's just a scrapyard for aircraft. Before I started working here, I knew the same thing everyone else knew, that the boneyard was a place that airplanes came to die. People are amazed when they hear what goes on out here at the boneyard. At the boneyard, what goes on keeps planes flying. The majority of the aircraft are here to offer their parts to keep similar aircraft airborne elsewhere. Others are taking a brief respite before returning to service. Basically, we're a storage place for the Air Force Department of Defense and also our allied nations for both aircraft and aerospace vehicles, as well as disposal. Our clients here are primarily, of course, the Air Force, but we also do our other sister services, the Navy, the Army, some Coast Guard, as well as allied nations. We have some Norwegian and Canadian aircraft with us right now, and we're also refurbishing and working on some Japanese aircraft as well as other Department of Defense entities and some other government entities such as the Forestry Service. All work that we do here, whether it's taking a part off an aircraft or returning an aircraft to flyable status is billed directly to the customer. The first stop for each arriving aircraft is to have its fuel and weapons removed. Then it is prepped for what could be a brief or lengthy stay in the desert climate. That protective coating is quite unique. It, it actually lowers the internal temperature of the aircraft, preserving it a little longer. Keeps out uh, dirt and critters, you know, where that shouldn't get, and actually uh, helps uh, keep uh, water out of uh, different areas of the aircraft. Our process out here takes 60 days from the time the pilot lands the aircraft to the time it's put in the desert. Remove adjusto bolts from upper actuators where they attach the vertical stab. Mechanics working on aircraft around the world request the specific parts they want from the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. That part might come from any one of the more than 4,000 airplanes in the boneyard, but only from the planes the customer owns. On average, we go through maybe anywhere from 20 to uh, 50 requests a day. Basically, it's up to the mechanic to decide uh, which aircraft they're actually going to go to to remove the part from because they're the experts they are out there every day and it's basically off of saving the customer time and money and how quick we can get the part out of the aircraft. Saving the customer dollars often translates into saving the U.S. taxpayer money. For example, Five of these C-130 actuators were shipped within a day to the Air Force at a cost of about $5,500, avoiding the cost of about $175,000 for the same newly manufactured parts, not to mention the time required to build them. And it's not just parts. Sometimes it's the entire aircraft. Right now, we're doing a regeneration on this aircraft. It's been in the desert probably for about nine, 10 years. The biggest challenge is the inspection part of it because it has been sitting out there a long time. And we are expected to go through it completely, structurally, electrically, hydraulically, engines, everything, and make sure it's safe to fly. It has to be uh, gone over pretty intensely. In the shelter, we have the A-10s, the C-130, the F-16s. We don't know what we'll be doing the next day. The same guys I have doing C-130s today could be doing F-18s tomorrow. So it's really being flexible. The regeneration of aircraft for flight requires the same effort and modifications, whether or not it returns as a fighter or a drone. These aircraft are coming out of the desert and we're using a manufacturing process uh, to uh, regenerate them to full uh, flight status. They are brought to flight specifications for both manned and unmanned flight capability. Our first aircraft we were producing, we're averaging about 217 days of production flow. We've been able to get that down to 78 days. Uh, we believe our anticipated process of throughput will be down to around 40 to 60 days that we'll be able to get these aircraft uh, through the process. That is from the desert to delivery in that time frame. Lieutenant Colonel Martin Meyer delivers to the customer each regenerated F-16. 
This is going to Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida. It's going to be flown as a manned fighter for uh, about four months, and then it's going to go to Cecil Field for Boeing uh, to be converted to a QF-16 target. A little bit of trivia for you. These were uh, napalm canisters originally, and then they recycled them and converted them into uh, travel pods so we could carry forms and gear and stuff. All right, look at the forms and I'm ready. To qualify as flyable, the plane has to make an initial flight where all systems are checked out. We try to check every single thing on the aircraft, which takes about an hour and a half of total flight time to do. So that includes uh, doing lots of afterburner checks, we checked the landing gear, we checked all the navigation and communication systems, we checked the weapon systems, and we checked the aircraft capabilities um, all the way from the surface all the way up to 40,000 feet, slow flight, fast flight all the way up to Mach 1.4, and also we take the aircraft up to its full uh, G capability, which is 9 Gs. A trip into the desert, no matter how brief, is not required for all the aircraft that visit the Boneyard. The 309th also updates and modifies planes still on active duty at what is called the Desert Speed Line. We're looking at this. We have a quick flow on these aircraft. Some of these, depending on the mods, are anywhere from the day we receive it to the day it leaves, 11 days. It's a fast-paced, uh, constant movement of the aircraft, as well as you know, getting them back to the home station in a timely manner. For those aircraft that have literally given their all, Disposal is their last stop at the boneyard to harvest and reclaim the steel. Eventually this is the end for all aircraft. Once all the parts have been reclamated off the aircraft, um, we prep the aircraft by removing all the hazards out of the aircraft, as well as pulling the engines out and everything to prep the aircraft for disposal, getting crushed by the recycling company, and then they'll recycle the metal. It takes more than 600 people to complete the process from receiving to recycling an aircraft at the four square mile boneyard. All of them are civilian workers, except one, the commander. I think the biggest reward working here on AMARG is working with the personnel. 75% of our personnel that were in the military at one point, moreover 50% of those are retired, so that means they've spent at least 20 years in the military. The people here at AMARG generally have been here for a long time, and so it's a very close-knit and a very interactive, warm community to come to and work with. 